Hey guys, we have something really cool today. It is a bundle consisting of a B-Link mini PC and a GPU docking station, including power supply, everything integrated and ready to go. As some of you know, I'm using mini PCs to produce all my content on the channel. Here we have the previous model I've been using since the end of last year. It's the B-Link SER9 and I'm using a M.2 to Oculink adapter together with a docking station to use my Ava Media capture card. This all works fine, but it's not the prettiest setup and it's not very stable. You have to be a little bit careful when you plug in a HDMI cable. So when B-Link reached out to test this bundle, I was really excited. It is the perfect solution for me and maybe other content creators or gamers, maybe digital nomads, you can disassemble this, put it all in your carry-on luggage and off you go. And the value is really good. eGPUs can be expensive and often they're not verified or the performance is not that optimal. Here you're getting eight dedicated PCI Express lanes with the PCI Express 4.0 standard and also a 600 watt power supply. As always, full disclosure, B-Link sent me this for free to do a video review. I'm not getting paid, but I do get to keep it. And this will be my main PC for producing videos on the channel. This mini PC is a little bit on the larger size. It's 158 millimeters wide and long. And in terms of height, you're looking at around 56 millimeters. Both the mini PC and the docking station have the power supply integrated. So you just need to source a local cable. Again, very handy if you are a digital nomad and you're traveling around, you can uh, just buy the cable locally and you don't need any travel adapters. The particular model that we are reviewing comes with the Intel Core i9 13900HK, which has 14 cores, 20 threads, and a maximum turbo frequency of 5.4 gigahertz. We have dual channel DDR5 memory running at 5200 megahertz, consisting of two 16 gigabyte modules, and it's upgradable up to 96 gigabyte, and that's one of the options you can select when buying this mini PC. Inside, we also have two M.2 slots, both following the PCI Express 4.0 standard. Installed in this unit was a one terabyte drive. Here we have some benchmark results. The performance is outstanding. I did have a go at opening the unit and digging a little bit deeper, but this one is not as straightforward to disassemble compared to other ones. So just keep that in mind. I chickened out and left everything the way it was. A nice touch is an integrated dust filter. Make sure you uh, remove it every now and then and clean it. In the box is the mini PC, a user manual, there's a power cable and also a HDMI cable. Let's have a look at all the ports and buttons on the docking station. There's a power button here and a power LED right next to it. The mini PC has the power button here this one also acts as a fingerprint sensor for logging on and here is the power LED. This audio port, we've got a USB-C port with 10 gigabits per second, SD card reader and another USB port also 10 gigabits per second and these four little holes here are a built-in microphone array. Here on the docking stations are two power connectors for a graphics card to 8-pin and cables are included. We have a USB 2 port here and these are for external antennas if you decide to install a Wi-Fi card into the integrated M.2 slot. Here we have a fan header that lets you install a custom fan if you want. At the back of the docking station, here goes the mains power. The power supply is integrated and it's rated for 600 watts. Here I've installed my Ava Media capture card. It only uses four PCI Express lanes. So if you're installing a GPU, it will use up to eight. We have heaps more ports at the back of the mini PC. Here goes the mains power. Again, a integrated power supply with 145 watts. These are the outlets for the cooling, so the warm air comes out of here. We have an audio port and 
This is a USB-C port with Thunderbolt 4. So it's compatible with Thunderbolt 4, power delivery, display port 1.4, and it's got a transfer rate of 40 gigabits per second. The HDMI port can do 4K 60, and the display port can do 4K and 144 hertz. We have two ethernet ports, both are 2.5 gigabits per second and have chipsets from Intel. And then we have four USB ports, and these all can do 10 gigabits per second. Let's start evaluating the processor first. So with every mini PC, I connect it to the internet. I download all the latest Windows updates, and then very important, also the latest drivers for the graphics card. In this case, it's one from Intel. And then I change the power profile to maximum performance. Pre-installed was a copy of Windows 11 Professional. And here we have some benchmark results. This is Cinebench R23. In the multi-core test, we're getting 15,546 points. And in the single core test, 2034. Especially the single core performance is very competitive. Here we can see the results against all the past mini PCs that I've tested on the channel. So that means that single threaded tasks happen really fast, including emulation like DOSBox or PCM. Multi-core performance is also decent, but it's a little bit behind some of the latest AMD based mini PCs. But later when we talk about the pricing, it all makes sense. This one is actually a much better value than some of the high-end mini PCs that cost a lot more. Now, most of you going for such a bundle, you will definitely use a dedicated GPU, but still, let's have a look at some benchmark results because the latest generation of Intel iGPUs is not that bad. In CloudGate, we're getting 32,154. In Skydiver, 20,473. In Firestrike, 6,235. And in TimeSpy, we're getting 2,164. On the website, B-Link publishes some results for 3D Mark and also Cinebench R23. And I'm pleased to say that the results that I measured are a little bit faster than what they are publishing on the website. So that's very good to see. I also tested a few games. First up, one of my all-time favorite racing games, it is Dirt 3, we're running at 1920 by 1080 with the ultra details and look at that, the performance is actually pretty decent, around the 60 FPS mark. Again, it's not comparable to some of the latest AMD based mini PCs like the SER9, but that machine is a much more expensive unit, so keep that in mind. The next game I like testing on the channel is Strange Brigade with the Vulcan API, 1920 by 1080p with low details. You can see the performance counter, the FPS counter on the top left corner on the screen. It's doing an okay job, but sometimes it dips below the 60 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a more challenging game. 1920 by 1080p with the lowest details. So this is a modern triple A title and definitely more of a challenge for this mini PC. So here you might have to dial down the resolution and uh, maybe enable some of those upscaling features in order to get more performance. And of course, does it run Crisis? Here we go. This is Crisis, the Steam version this time. Usually I test the GOG version. And in the past, I had issues with Crisis and Intel GPUs. But yeah, it seems the latest drivers uh, address the issue. It seems to be running perfectly fine. Sometimes it dips below 60, but this game is so unoptimized. It happens even with more powerful machines. So all in all, yeah, it was a playable experience. So yes, this mini PC can run Crisis. All the networking is from chips made by Intel. So Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi 6 module and the dual Ethernet ports are all based on Intel. That means faster connection times and the performance in general is just better compared to modules from Realtek or other manufacturers. Here you can see me installing the mini PC onto the GPU docking station. There's a little 
rubber cover that covers the 8x slot so you have to remove that and then you just slide in the mini pc and it comes with a little piece of plastic and some screws where you can securely attach the mini pc the eGPU docking station is compatible with triple slot video cards it has two 8-pin power connectors a 600 watt power supply there's also integrated m.2 slots for a PCI Express uh, SSD or Wi-Fi module, including external antennas, but we are limited to a single PCI Express lane, so do keep that in mind. I'm a content creator. I'm not playing games that much anymore, mostly older games, emulators, or I play on dedicated retro gaming PCs. So for me, it was more important to use a capture card. If you're interested in graphics benchmarks with an external video card, there are so many reviews out there just run a quick search so for me i tested the ava media capture card it uses four pci express lanes and yeah it worked beautifully and it's a much more stable operation less uh, wobbly and finicky compared to uh, what i had before with the m.2 to oculink adapter ai is a huge buzzword at the moment and it comes with voice integration with a built-in microphone array and smart audio pickup and noise reduction also built-in speaker so you can uh, place voice calls without having to use a headset one aspect that really impressed me is the cooling solution it's very quiet whisper quiet we have a mcs 2.0 cooling system with vapor chamber and a silent fan i also have some results from the mini pc running the multi-core test in Cinebench, I saw around 90 watts. That's without the dock, just the mini PC on its own. And in the single core test, I saw 46 watts. And now let's talk about the pricing. So if you buy the bundle, the mini PC with the docking station together, you get a 60 US dollar discount. So all up, you're looking at 678 USD. I think that's a great price. So that is the 13900HK with 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and the docking station included. And you don't need to rush out and buy a power supply. It's all integrated in the device itself. So guys, I think this is a really interesting concept. Um, I've been using mini PCs for quite some time, and they always have a really decent CPU, but they fall short on the graphics side. Yeah, the latest AMD mini PCs, they have some decent graphics power, but against a dedicated GPU, it's still quite slow. And yeah, this one is nice because a lot of these eGPU solutions that you buy, they're not certified. Uh, there's no guarantee that they work. Performance can be limited. For example, only four uh, PCI Express lanes. This one has eight and they're of the 4.0 standard. So most High-end video cards will have no issue uh, being fully utilized with such a setup. And it's very neat that the power supplies are integrated in both units. So you just need uh, the cable here and there. You don't need any power bricks. So it's a really nice, neat, minimalistic setup. Gaming is obviously the prime target for such a device. But there are also people like me, content creators with a capture card, I've been looking for such a solution that looks very neat, well put together, is stable, but easily disassembled. You can put it in your carry-on luggage and off you go. I like the performance of the CPU, especially the single core performance, which means, for example, editing on a timeline is nice and snappy. A lot of tasks are still single threaded. The multi-core tests are not as fast as some of the latest and greatest mini PCs, but then also this one is much cheaper. And I think the price is decent with the bundle, getting the dock and the mini PC all together. It saves you a lot of hassle because this is certified, everything works together and you don't have any compatibility issues. So all in all, this bundle gets the thumbs up from me. And now I want to hear from you. What is your take on this bundle? combining a mini PC with a docking station to either upgrade the graphics or use something else, maybe a sound card or a capture card 
luck in my case. As always, leave the comments down below in the video description and have a look uh, underneath the video if there are any coupons or discounts like that. I will post them there, but that's not up to me and prices can also change. So do keep that in mind. The prices I've communicated were the prices at the time of producing this video.